Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sport Federation TV. A number of interviews lined up for you th this evening. This is, of course, the show that looks after the uh, federations of the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation and the six demarcated districts, municipal districts within the Western Cape. Nice full show for you this evening. We'll speak to Riyad Davids, president of Western Cape Tennis. Um, and he'll tell us a little bit more about their return to play and quite a lot of information around how the safety aspects are working at clubs and how the cl uh, club coaches, tennis coaches themselves, are certified in terms of the various criteria needed at uh, tennis. We'll speak to Corne Bence, he is the president of uh, Western Cape Cycling. They've been busy with some return to training activity, so we're looking forward to find out what's happening in the world of cycling. And then we'll speak to... Um, uh, Christine Kennedy, she's on the line with us now. We're going to cross to her in a second from Cape Town Lifesaving. And then, of course, we did an interview with uh, Mary Louise Vermeerland from Archery, Western Cape Archery Champion, a few weeks ago. And a few people have asked us to repeat that interview. And uh, we'll be catching up with Rebecca Selkirk in an interview that we did last week. But we haven't had a chance to play that out yet because we had such a full show last week. Rebecca Selkirk is, of course, Western Cape um, Chess Champion with... Quite a lot of international experience, so that's a nice, exciting interview. But joining me on the line now is um, Christine Kennedy from Cape Town Life Saving. Christine, it's great to have you on the line. How are things on your side? I'm all good on my side. A little bit chilly, but otherwise good. We understand that uh, Life Saving has been given the option to return to some level of training at least. Uh, yes, we have. Obviously, we have to adhere to the guidelines that the government has laid down. So it's strict protocols. We have to obviously do temperature screening and, and there's certain limited numbers and obviously certain things that we can't actually do. Club has to be sanitized before and after. But yes, yeah. training is going ahead. So It's been a, a difficult few months, obviously, for, for all sport. Um, I, I'm imagining that it it must have been quite stressful for you guys as well from a life-saving point of view over the last few months. Yes, it was terrible because it was basically two days before our nationals and um, everything was cancelled. So all the clubs were ready to go up to PE to compete at nationals. And at the last minute, this was cancelled. And let's just go back a little, a little bit. How many, how many life-saving clubs have we got in Cape Town? Um, there is uh, surf and pool life-saving. I think it's a total of 18 clubs. Yeah, and of course there's a difference, it, it, maybe just explain that also, so there's a difference between uh, competitive life-saving and life-savers who practice and support services on weekends and so on. Yes, so the guys that stand on the beach on the weekends, they're there from November to the end of Easter weekend, and those are completely voluntary lifeguards. You also have your paid lifeguards, which are paid by the city of Cape Town, which work the other days during the week, and um, the times that the voluntary lifeguards are not on duty. Um, the duty lifeguards, you'll find most of them do compete because you obviously want your lifeguards to have a level of fitness. Yeah. So it's, um, it's hand in hand. You compete and you do voluntary duty. Christine, so what has been happening over the lockdown period in terms of, um, of lifesaving? We know that right in the beginning, uh, uh, people weren't allowed onto the beaches. There was no activity allowed, no surfing allowed and so on. Um, what happened from a lifesaving perspective? Um, we weren't allowed to operate at all because obviously we couldn't go to our clubs which are municipality owned and we also couldn't go onto the beach either so yeah. training and life saving came to a complete standstill and where, where do we stand now i mean we've got surfing happening on the beach and people are allowed to to move again back on the beach are the life savers active um this is actually our off season but the lifeguards have started becoming active in the various clubs and obviously they're on the beaches um there's been a lot of rescues during the off season really? because there's been people that haven't been listening to don't go to the beach don't go in the water um so there has been quite a lot of rescues quite a people a lot of people getting into trouble so we do perform an essential service and we have been around but um we're only going full steam now you've got a couple of top athletes though uh, that have been competing I mean, we've interviewed Lyle on the show, and we know that you've got Melissa, um, top athletes that have been competing at a world level. Um, how, how are we doing from a South Africa perspective? They're actually doing very well, and it's throughout all the clubs. We've got top athletes in probably just about every single club, beach and surf lifeguards. Um, I would imagine that they've been doing private training throughout the lockdown period. Um, we don't know where they are at the moment because obviously we haven't had a competition. So that'll be end of November. We'll see where we're at. But 
the, the top athletes, I'm presuming they would have kept themselves fit. And if people want to join now, if you want, if you if you got a, a if you want to join a life saving club, um, is that able? Can you do that? Is that can people do that now? Not well. They can join, but at the moment they can't actually um, go down and do any courses. We um, it's still very strict guidelines that we have yeah. to actually follow so okay. with new courses it's very limited numbers very limited training sessions as well so yes they can join um but probably when it goes down to lockdown one or or no lockdown will be better but yeah. um they can associate with any whatever wherever their nearest club is and what, what's your current activity what, what are the lifesavers that are at the clubs at the moment what, what are they what's their next big thing that they're that they're doing of course under the and we know that there's restrictions at the moment, but what is it that excites the life-saving fraternity at the moment? At the moment is to actually do the annual retest. So a lot of them are getting fit to do that. And a, there's a few clubs that have already started with the annual retest. So the main thing is for the lifeguards to um, know the new CPR protocols, which is with the BVM bag. It's not no longer contact CPR. And um, they also have to do their um, run, swim runs and their board rescues. So it's just get maintaining their fitness so that they can actually pass their annual retest. Just, you, you, we obviously think of lifesavers as um, uh, the first thing that we see is CPR. Uh, and, and, and probably most of us are familiar with that because we've seen it in the movies. Um, but but you, you say that with the COVID restrictions now, um, the resuscitation process has changed. There's, uh, uh, that's obviously not allowed anymore. Um, I think lifeguards are more preventative. We actually want to prevent a rescue from happening before it happens. So most of your lifeguards need to be alert to actually make sure to stop something before it actually happens. But yeah. in the unlikely event that there is a rescue and they have to um, resuscitate a person, yes, those processes have completely changed. Before you used to do ABC, you used to touch the patient, make sure the patient was alert um, or not alert. Yeah. Now it's yeah. completely no touch. You've got to look and see, and um, you're doing two-man CPR with a yeah. with a uh, bag, valve, um, can't explain, it's BVM, yeah. it's what it's called. Yeah. But yeah. it is a completely different process that the lifeguards are learning now. That's unbelievable. That's so much new information for us. We haven't thought about, well, I suppose one, one should, un should know these things. Um, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, all about protection. It's protection of your of yourself and protection of the bystanders as well. So everybody's got to be aware of COVID. It is out there, and you have to make sure that you are protected. Yeah, um, Christine, we'll um, we'll we'll leave it at that now, and we'll say thanks to you for chatting with us, and uh, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon, and 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 hopefully your athletes will be able to compete again shortly. Yes, thank you. No, that'll be fantastic if they can. Um, we've got some really great talent. There we go, folks. Christine Kennedy, um, of course, a chairperson of Cape Town Life Saving. And oh, wow, so many different things that the, that the life savers are busy doing at the moment to obviously stay safe. And well, most importantly, also to make sure that you are staying safe. And it's one of those uh, sports that we can actually recognize as an essential service um, for you as as a member of the public and we should actually be most grateful to them but uh, that's of course Christine Kennedy chairperson of Cape Town Life Saving we look forward to carry on showcasing Life Saving who in fact is doing really really well from the Western Cape perspective and on an international uh, uh, international level um, as you know we've had Lyle de Mornay on the show world um, a life-saving champion. Folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we're going to catch up with Courtney Benz, president of Western Cape Cycling. They're busy with training at the moment. We'll find out what they're up to. Right, next up is a lunge with a bicep curl. So this is targeting our main posterior chain, glutes, hamstrings, and obviously biceps with the bicep curl. From this movement, you're going to make sure that with any orthopedic issues or any knee issues, that you decrease your range of motion so don't go into such a deep squat. Right, starting off, dumbbells at your side, standing nice and tall, no rounded shoulders, standing nice and tall, taking a nice big step forward. From there, bending your back knee as you go down to the floor, keeping up nice and tall, bicep curl, and drive the weight back. Right, and you're going to alternate sides as we go along. Nice big step, lunge, bicep curl, and step up. Right, for sore knees, Decrease the range and work from there. 